scoured the earth to find the toughest tools. From dynamic compactors pounding the earth to the concrete pulverizer. This elite group of tools operates with a single purpose. Destroy anything that gets in the way without mercy. They are the slashers and crushers. Massachusetts, one of the largest tools in America, is ready to destroy some buildings. The crew could use a wrecking ball, which brings down the building fast, but makes a terrible mess. So the wrecking ball has been replaced with the meanest machine in their arsenal. Meet the concrete pulverizer. This 16,000 pound jaw devours concrete, rock, and pipe. The pulverizer attaches to a world-class 114-ton demolition excavator. Its articulating arm is 41 feet long, built to reach the top of a four-story building and tear its roof off. Its maximum jaw opening? Almost six feet tall, four feet wide, and three feet deep. Big enough to swallow a refrigerator in one bite. When the video is slowed down more than 100 times, we see the sheet metal is no match for the pulverizer. The pulverizer's jaws strike specific targets, necessary when its next hit is in the heart of a small town in southern Massachusetts. Its mission? Destroy an abandoned mill. And unlike today's easily bulldozed prefab factories, this fortress is constructed of granite buttresses, reinforced concrete, steel, and iron. That's our goal right now, is to get that three-story down as soon as possible. It's a very large job with some massive structures on it. It's not every job that we get to utilize a pulverizer this big. It's an ideal tool for the tasks that we have ahead of us. We have neighbors to contend with, so we have to do this work as surgically as possible with as little interference to the surrounding community. Today's showdown will be a battle between construction's toughest material and demolition's fiercest fighter. The brains behind the brawn? Excavator operator, Eddie Olet. That particular machine, oh, it's incredible. Because you can pretty much crush anything. It's fun to know that you're disintegrating something. Before the concrete pulverizer, no other tool had a fraction of its speed or strength. What makes the concrete pulverizer better? It's all about the jaws. The jaws have the power to lift a five-ton block of concrete ten times the size of an executive office desk. And the precision to drop it wherever it wants. So this pulverizer is designed for heavy demolition jobs where you have very thick sections of concrete that need to be pulverized on a large carrier. These incisors pack a punch of 120,000 pounds per square inch. That's over double the jaw power of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The jaws have vertical rows of teeth. Four serrated rows on top, five on bottom. This huge amount of surface area allows the monster to munch on any building material up to five feet thick. Best of all, the jaws are replaceable, so they always stay razor sharp. This versatile tool can even be used as a battering ram. With a hammering force of more than 6,000 foot-pounds, 
enough to flatten a five-foot file cabinet to five inches. But the pulverizer is useless without the juice to power it up. The might behind the bite? A six-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine, 688 horsepower, more than an Enzo Ferrari. Eddie knows the machine doesn't come without danger. Every year, more than 40 people die in excavator accidents. The number one cause? Being run over. With the machine as large as this is, the visibility is limited. You just have to be very careful what you do and where you move to. Somebody get behind you, you have to watch out for yourself as well as the people around you, because anything could happen. Eddie starts today's job by crushing debris from around the corner of the old mill. The concrete pulverizer made short work of the mill's wood framing and concrete foundation. But now it's up against a much worthier opponent, granite. Granite is primarily quartz and feldspar, two of the hardest minerals on Earth. To demonstrate just how tough granite is, we're subjecting it to a hailstorm of Mark V 9mm bullets. These bullets travel at 2,800 feet per second with almost 1,000 foot-pounds of force. The granite refuses to break, while the cinder blocks below it are completely destroyed. After eight direct hits, the granite is barely scratched. When subjected to a crushing force of half a million pounds, the boulder doesn't stand a chance. To withstand that kind of force without breaking itself, the pulverizer is built with seven different types of heat-treated steel. The steel in this pulverizer is actually thicker and stronger than the upper hull structure in an M1 Abrams main battle tank. The concrete pulverizer goes head to head against a motley crew of cast iron columns, wooden beams, and concrete reinforced with steel rebar. It's munched through granite and sorted through iron, but now it's hit the wall. I'm gonna take the front face of this building down. It's a concrete wall, approximately three foot thick, so it's very strong. For once, the concrete pulverizer has bitten off more than it can chew. Its jaws are too narrow to swallow the wall whole. The tool is powerful enough, but it's not big enough. Oh, it's always say wide enough. Probably only take down a small section, like say one column or two. It just won't work. The situation could turn deadly. The more pieces created during demolition, the greater the chance of an inward collapse, crushing Eddie in the cockpit. If he starts putting little pushes on it, I'm afraid of another piece coming in at the machine and the operator, him getting injured, because he's right under it on the inside of the footprint. The men's solution is simple, but effective. Widen the jaw's surface area by clamping onto a steel I-beam. It will turn the jaws into a 15-foot wide battering ram. It's time to put the pulverizer to the test and take down the wall. Dust settles, the operation is a smashing success. With the I-beam inside of the pulverizer, it went absolutely perfect, and that wall really didn't stand a chance. The concrete pulverizer. It rips into any building material, then turns the wreckage into gold. 